Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Strategic Marketing Executive um, Program Taster Session. My name is Lucky Singh, and I'm the Client Relationship Manager here at King's Business School. And I work specifically on the Strategic Marketing Program, and I oversee the recruitment and admissions um, side of things. Um, joining me today is Dr. Stefan Bernritter, who is our um, course director, and he's the Associate Professor of Marketing. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Stefan now to take you through the course and then um, tell you a bit more at the end. Uh, over to you, Stefan. Okay, thank you very much, Lucky. And yeah, welcome everybody who's watching. So um, to start with, I'd like you uh, to go through the agenda for today. Uh, we'll st first start briefly with introducing you to the program. Um, I'll then uh, talk a little bit about who this program is actually for. Um, we'll talk about the program content, uh, who your lecturers will be, um, and talk about the key questions and themes of the program. So first of all, about the course, what is this course about? Um, so yeah, the marketing landscape has changed tremendously during the last decade or so. And uh, therefore businesses are actually facing a number of challenges such as for example, uh, for example the rapidly evolving media landscape, platformization and an increased, uh, increasingly more globalized market and customer base. And we designed this course to um, really demystify those challenges and provide participants with the necessary toolkit and skills to master those. Um, we are doing this by um, relying, on, relying on the latest research tools and analysis techniques. And uh, after the course, um, we design the course, but after the course, you'll be able to really critically evaluate and develop successful marketing strategies and innovation for organizational growth and also profitability. So who is it for? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so ideally, you should have some background in marketing. That's not an educational background, but you ha should have touch points in your daily business with marketing. So this could be, for example, uh, managers, leaders, and specialist professional professionals who are looking to take greater uh, take on greater leadership responsibility, um, involving stuff like business growth, innovation, planning, and marketing strategy. This could be executives who either have direct responsibility for marketing customers, brands, or markets, or whose performance in their role relies on those that do. Could also be functional general managers or leaders who have significant experience in the marketing field and who look to refresh the knowledge, um, or for whom developing an understanding of the landscape of marketing is a new challenge. But it could also be entrepreneurs uh, or individuals who are starting or just growing their own business and really need to develop those strategic marketing skills um, to do this effectively. So it's a broad range. Um, as a rule of thumb, you should have some touch points with marketing. Uh, you do not need to have an educational background in marketing. We don't require that. Um, but it should be important for your work, either uh, in the present or in the future. Just a few details about how all this will look like. Um, the format will be in person, so you will be able to visit a beautiful bush house in, in the heart of London. You couldn't be more central in London um, on our beautiful premises. Um, it will be held uh, for, in the week from 4 to 8, 8th of April and the, of this year at King's Business School. And we will every day we will, will actually be devoted to a different topic. I'll walk you through this topic uh, topics in just a second. Uh, our lectures will be provided by uh, mainly our core KBU, KBS faculty. Uh, so these are real experts in their fields. We have a guest lecture. We use discussions, so it's highly interactive. We use case studies, and we'll also engage in hands-on computer-based exercises to allow you to really put those uh, this knowledge uh, which you gathered during the course into practice immediately. So here's just a quick overview of the program content of these five days. Um, this is this might be subject to change in terms of on what day uh, is happening what, but these are the general topics which you uh, will learn about. So we will kick off on the first day, um, which all stands in the sign of brands and social media. We'll start with a quick welcome and course overview by myself, 
uh, and then we'll uh, we'll further go into a branding class um, we'll lo- where you learn ins and outs of branding, and we'll close the day uh, with a lecture on social media marketing, um, where you uh, really will learn what social media marketing is about and how you can use social media to your own uh, benefit in your organization. The second day stands in the light of marketing strategy. Here you will um, cover topics such as segmentation, targeting, and pricing. And at the second part of that day, you'll actually start with what we call the simulation experience. So that's a computer-based exercise, team-based exercise in which you um, simulate your own business um, and in which you need to make um, strategic marketing decisions. Um, So here you can really see what your choices um, in terms of marketing on these topics, such as segmentation, targeting, and pricing, uh, what the consequences of these choices are. On day three, uh, we'll mainly cover marketing communications um, from a more global perspective with a lecture on globally integrated marketing communications. And at the second part of the day, we'll continue with our simulation experience. On day day four, we'll mainly focus on consumer behavior. Um, So this is really about the psychological processes underlying uh, the decisions and behavior of consumers. Um, And the second part, we'll have a guest lecture. This will need to be still need to be confirmed and we'll close that day uh, with the last and final part of the simulation experience where it all comes together and where you really see what kind of choices you made and uh, what the consequences of these choices were. We'll close this week uh, with a half day um, in which we'll um, focus on designing and communicating service offerings, and we'll also say goodbye with a lovely farewell lunch at Bush House. Then after a couple of weeks, um, you'll actually come back to Bush House for our capstone day. You will wrap up a course, we'll have presentations um, where you will present on... um, a little assignment you will actually do on a marketing challenge in your own environment. Um, and you will, there you will also get um, your certificates and we'll celebrate that, of course. So this was for our course content, um, but I can imagine that you're also curious of who your lecturers will be. So I'll walk you through that just now. Um, we first of all, let's start with Dr. Gillian Brooks. Uh, Gillian is a lecturer in strategic marketing. Uh, in this program, she'll lecture on branding, and she is, is, a, is a great specialist in topics such as branding, consumer behavior, social media, and marketing strategy. Another of your lectures will be Dr. Matteo Matecci. He's a lecturer in marketing here at KBS. Um, in this course, he will lecture strategic marketing and, to be confirmed, uh, marketing the marketing simulation experience. He specializes in luxury marketing, fashion marketing, social media, um, consumer behavior, and transparency. Then we have Professor Shintaro Okazaki. Shintaro is a professor of marketing here at King's Business School. Um, In this uh, course, he'll lecture on globally integrated marketing communications, and his specializations lie in marketing communications, digital marketing, social issues in marketing, international marketing, and tourism. Then we have Dr. Elias Danatsis. Elias is a lecturer in marketing analytics here at KBS. Uh, His lecture in this course will be on designing and communicating service offerings. And uh, he specializes in services marketing and services management. And last, there's me. I'll also lecture uh, in this course next to my role as a course director. I will pr- give the lectures on social media marketing and consumer behavior. Um, my background is in consumer psychology, digital marketing, consumer brand interactions, and the science and art of persuasion. So as you see, there's actually a lot of lectures for just a couple of days. The reason for that is that we do want to make sure that you will get lectures by people who are absolute experts in their field. So with every lecture, you can be sure that these people are actually enga- actively engaging in world-renowned research on these particular topic. So this is to make sure that you will get cutting edge knowledge uh, about these topics. As a next step, I would like to walk you uh, briefly to uh, through, through two examples and key themes um, of this uh, course, just to give you a sense of what the um, really core challenges are 
we are discussing uh, in the course. So one topic we'll talk about, and that's just one of many examples, of course, is the issue with defining and reaching your target audience. This is often done based on uh, demographics or psychographics. So the idea um, that you could define your uh, target audience based on characteristics such as gender, um, age, uh, location, um, whether somebody's married or not, where people live, um, what their income is. Uh, so these, these are demographics. So takes, for example, Prince Charles here. Uh, imagine you're, you're, uh, you want to target people who are like Prince Charles, right? Uh, probably a very, very, very tiny target group, but you never know. Very, very wealthy individuals. Uh, so you might come up with this and you have this uh, stereotype in your mind and you think people with those demographics look like this. Problem is, we also have Ozzy Osbourne, who has exactly the same demographic. He's male, born in the same year, raised in the UK, married twice, lives in a castle, he's wealthy and famous. So I, I trust you see the problem here. Um, if your targeting is based on demographics alone, you would perhaps target Prince or Ozzy Osbourne with something which appeals to Prince Charles. And I think we can assume that their tastes and preferences might be quite different. Or well, might be the other way around. So that means that you will lose out a lot of your potential target audience if your targeting um, looks like that. So targeting based on demographics or psychographics is often wildly inaccurate. We'll talk about topics like that. And we'll also introduce you to ways how you can circumvent problems like this, um, errors like this, and how you really can implement your um, targeting um, effectively, and how to define your re uh, target audience in the right way. That's one of the topics we'll cover in some of the lectures, for example, the branding lecture, but also um, in the social media marketing lecture. Another topic, which is um, will be will actually be talked about in the social media marketing lecture is the question of how we can actually get people to engage with our brands online. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you haven't lived under a, uh, under a rock for the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, or even longer, you've probably noticed that a lot of marketing activity has shifted to the online domain, specifically to social media. Um, and the assumption there is that um, social media marketing is more effective, partly because it allows for what we call electronic word of mouth. Uh, so you have probably heard stuff, uh, terms like viral marketing, um, uh, word of mouth in general. The idea behind is that consumers themselves actually do part of the heavy lifting in your marketing activities for you by means of sharing uh, branded content. And so that's the holy grail of every social media marketing is if they see that people engage with the content, that people share um, your branded content with their own friends and family and network on social media. The problem is, however, that people are not on social media to talk with brands or about brands. On social media are first and foremost social. So we as brands or marketers, we are intruders and we need to realize that. Um, that we are intruders or that people really don't like to talk about brands, particularly online, is also reflected on quite a lot of research. People actually do not really um, want to talk about brands, particularly not online. They're actually much more likely to talk about brands in face-to-face -face personal interactions. So that would mean that, for example, um, I would be more likely to recommend you a brand face-to-face -face than I would be to share this recommendation with my friends on social media. The reason behind that is mainly that consumers perceive talking about brands online to contain higher social risk. Uh, so it's more risky for them to talk about these brands online. Reason for that, again, is, for example, that online you have a much greater audience. Uh, so you can't really fine tune whom you're recommending what. Uh, you're recommending everything to all of your friends because all of them can see that. Whereas if you're you know, in a face-to-face -face setting, you exactly see uh, whom you're talking with, and um, you have control about whether the your recommendation or your mention of a brand is actually something which is um, valuable for this for, for for this person or this group of people. So, because people think it's more risky, and uh, if you share something that doesn't go down well with all of your all of your followers or friends, <clears throat> you risk that these people feel like, yeah, I don't want to see that. 
Um, it's not great. I unfriend you or whatever. So there are social negative consequences involved here. And that's, that's a huge problem. So therefore, people are much less likely to engage in behavior like um, online electronic word of mouth compared to actually doing it face to face. So one of the core topics of a social media marketing lecture would be, for example, um, to understand why people actually engage in this electronic word of mouth and use this knowledge to really translate uh, this into something actionable as to how you can actually make your social media marketing more profitable, make your social, me social media marketing more likely to result in this engagement. Uh, because there are a couple of uh, things and bits we can do to make this difference between um, electronic word of mouth and uh, traditional word of mouth, make this gap a little bit smaller uh, or actually much smaller. So that's one of the things you'll learn in the course. So these were our two examples. Um, <clears throat> let me conclude with uh, a few learning objectives. Um, we designed this course with these objectives in mind. Um, these are things like that this course will equip you to develop the marketing mindset that you really need to succeed in a fast-paced digital world. Um, so even if you only partly work with marketing after this course, you probably know how your marketing mindset works and what the marketing uh, lingo looks like. Uh, so you can actually participate in discussions uh, with marketing professionals. Uh, it will also equip you to immediately apply your learnings after each session and beyond. We have the simulation experience, as mentioned before. Uh, we also use a lot of um, interactive um, discussions um, in which you actually can put your learnings into uh, practice immediately. You'll also be able to select the best strategies and market insights to create growth and a competitive advantage for your uh, organization. We'll equip you to understand consumers' behavior in this post-digital world, as mentioned in the examples, for example. Uh, you should also be able to build strong brands by means of knowing uh, the essentials of branding. And this course will also equip you to understand how to effectively use marketing communications to communicate with your uh, customer base, but also uh, consumers you still might want to reach um, in this increasingly globalized marketplace. So I've put here a couple of key highlights for you. Um, these are just a few examples, but I believe one of the key highlights really is our networking opportunities, which you will have with a cohort of attendees from around the world. We are a highly international business school. Our participants are very international, um, which will allow you to develop and grow a much stronger network in this marketing uh, world. Uh, another highlight is that you can put your new knowledge into practice by engaging in our interactive simulations. Um, we also have, as, as, as I've shown you before, a range of speakers across KBS. Um, our student staff ratio is, is, is really, really high. So we, we have a very personal and interactive approach in small groups with ex absolute experts in their fields, which are very, very much looking forward to share their expertise with you so that you can use that expertise in your daily business. And that's actually all from my side. And um, I'd like to hand it back to you, Lucky. Great, thank you so much, Stefan. Um, and thank you for um, sharing the course information with everybody. Um, it sounds incredibly exciting and I, I'm sure that everybody's found it um, to be really useful, so thank you. Um, and I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's watching. Um, as Stefan mentioned, um, we are the program starts on the 4th of April. Um, applications are open and we're more than happy to share some more information with you and discuss um, you know, why it's relevant to you and why it'd be relevant to your organization. And uh, I'm happy to have a conversation with you to, to give you a bit more information. So please do reach out to me if you're interested. Um, my email address is over there. Um, and yes, hopefully speak to you soon and, and hear from you soon. And again, thank you so much, Stefan. 